Okay, so in this screen of settings, there's many things to look at. Again, I'm not going to look at every single one of these, um, but let's look at another very important screen. If we jump down here to preferred page audience, there's some very useful information here. Let's check this out. Preferred page audience. Uh, to simplify our settings, we removed the page preference audience, okay. which could edit. You can still add or edit country age restriction. Ah, that's interesting. I hadn't checked it until today, but when I taught this, you know, two months ago, this, this was here. Okay, so never mind. Never mind about this page at all. Uh, this is related to something else that we will look at uh, in a little bit also. Uh, this would be a way to further target our audience, but it seems that they've removed it but we have a version of it in a different way so we'll come back to it we'll say just for the notes here we'll say old old setting preferred page audience new setting boosting demographics Again, I'll get back to that a little later. Demographics. It's basically who are we trying to target, who is most interested in our product, um, who would like to buy our product. And there used to be a way to set some of that over here under this screen. There was still in the old ways in the old days a way to do this but now it looks like they're really focusing in focusing in us into this they charge for boosting demographics don't they? Mm -hmm. did they ever charge for the preferred page audience? nope mm -hmm. there's our answer okay let's look at another item over here then let's scroll down Instagram raise your hand if you knew that Instagram was owned by Facebook. No hands. Okay. Instagram is owned by Facebook. Instagram is another social network. It's another social network to share photos and video and content and all of that. Well, Instagram uh, was founded like in 2012 or something, and it's uh, it was a popular network and eventually popular enough that Facebook bought them for a few billion dollars. Not million, billion for a few billion dollars a few years ago. And uh, I'll pull out my hipster card by saying I've been on Facebook or on Instagram since week one when they first came out. So I was on Instagram before all you, all you people. So uh, I've been uh, using it and uh, I thought it was very fun and interesting and different than the other networks. This is what I said last time about people that are on Facebook want to be on Facebook for a reason. People that are on Snapchat want to be on Snapchat for a reason. People that are on you know, Twitter want to be on there because they don't want to be elsewhere. So I was on Instagram. I thought it was interesting. I didn't want to be on the other networks. I was on Instagram. And then I saw the tech news about Facebook to purchase Instagram and I almost deleted my account because again I don't want anything with Facebook but I kept it and then I was actually surprised that for like two or three years Facebook was pretty hands-off they didn't change anything about the the character or the direction of Instagram and I thought that was cool until like the last year or year and a half then now Facebook has really started to exert their power over their property of Instagram uh, personally for the to the detriment of the users but great for the positiveness of the businesses as again again as I said for personal I don't like Facebook but for business I love Facebook same thing here Instagram uh, I think they've made a lot of changes that I don't like as a user of Instagram but they've made a lot of changes that I love as a business on Instagram so there's a whole screen over here where you can link your Instagram account to your business's Facebook account and cross-pollinate, cross-post, meaning something that you put on your Facebook will also go to your Instagram. So you, it will go to the both of the networks to reach those audiences. 
And that sounds like, well, why would I do that? I'll just put it in one place. Everyone's on Facebook. Again, yes, everyone's on Facebook, but those that are on Instagram are on Instagram because they don't want to be on Facebook. And Instagram has been doing very, very well. The latest stats show that they're at about 500 million users. And again, back when I signed up in the very beginning, there were like, you know, 10 million. And now there's 500 million. So uh, it has been good just in terms of numbers of this for them to be bought. And of course, the people that invented it became rich overnight. More power to them. And now Instagram is a, is a viable network for us businesses. So we'll do a little side a little sidebar about Instagram. If you do take the longer version of this class, the three month long version, on month two, we cover Instagram. We cover how to set it up, how to use it, get followers, all that stuff. In this shorter class of only two weeks, we're just gonna touch on it very superficially because we don't have the time. Instagram currently owned by Facebook over 500 million users younger demographic these things are blurring all the time people often ask me to define what's the demographic who am I gonna find on the right network and I, I think I said on Tuesday don't quite think about you will only find a certain demographic on a certain network there are networks that skew toward a network but you should be able to find most of their demographic on most networks I believe I said last time how uh, yeah Pinterest is um, Pinterest is a, um, a female focused or female leaning network and and if you're looking for that audience you might find them there sure but you'll probably also find your audience your female focused audience on Twitter etc Instagram in quotes younger whatever that's however that's defined a younger generation after not wanting to be on Facebook anymore because their parents are there and their uncles are there and their grandparents are there where else do I go where they're not where they don't get it I'll go to Instagram and now Instagram is more passe in some demographics because now they've got 500 million users. Well, my mom also followed me back to Instagram. Okay, I'm going to go where they're not. Snapchat. Or I'm going to go where they're not over here. This other network, whatever. So there are different networks with different demographics, but I wouldn't worry too much about the right demographic, meaning you can find who you're looking for on the network. But Instagram is very popular, 500 million users, younger demographic, very visual, visually based. So photos, videos, stories. <clears throat> if you take the class where we talk about Instagram in detail, we'll see the details about these things. But um, photos, videos, and stories, very multimedia pictures, text, filters, but it has all the things that the other networks have, followers, likes, comments, etc. If you connect your Facebook to your Instagram, you'll be able to cross-post, cross-promote. Meaning you post something on Facebook and it can go over to Instagram. Uh, you hit two birds with one stone. You put the one picture on your Facebook and it'll also go to your Instagram. Or you can keep it separate and have different things on different networks. Let's see what other settings are on this screen. Add your Instagram to get started. Add your Instagram profile here. Manage comments. Create Instagram ads. Yeah, so if, uh, if you do have an Instagram, you can connect to it here. They will then both be used together. Any questions on this screen? <clears throat> OK, so 
The other settings, you can kind of look at them on your own. There's your support inbox, payments, we'll talk about that later. Uh, Random content. Okay, you can look at the rest of the settings on your own. The ones I really wanted to cover were the connection to Instagram, your page roles, and the um, and the uh, general. From the top strip over here, we have page, inbox, etc. Let's look at each one briefly and then in detail. Page is the home page of this page, the home screen of this page. Where home at the top over here is the uh, the home that will take you back to the very top level of your of your name of your account. The um, page there at the top left takes you back to edit your main home page. So we'll have um, top right menu. From left to right we've got home, inbox, notifications, insights, publishing tools, admin feed. Insights Publishing Tools. Settings and Help. Home. Takes you back to the home page of your site shows you shows you your accounts URL every time you go you you click that home button it will show you the URL at the top bar that's that's your address to then send out on an email or um, to share on another network so it's a quick way to refer back to what your URL is um, this home page where you post something new so video photo text whatever we'll see what other options we have um, let's see that's it for their inbox your back and forth communication with your followers. We have the option for people to private message you. People can write something public on your page so everyone could see it. Or private, like some one-on-one -on -one questions or tech support in your inbox. This is private message. Private messages. Be careful. Nothing is really ever private. I may be having a back and forth conversation with a disgruntled with a disgruntled um, customer. And, and things get heated. Uh, that's not public. It's only between the inboxes. But on any phone or computer, you can copy the whole screen. This right here that I'm that I'm doing right here, on on my keyboard here on the computer, I can I can press print screen. And what that does is it made a copy of everything that I that I had on my screen. So I just press print screen, and then I'm going to open up Word, and I'm going to paste it. So everything that was just on my screen a moment ago, it's a picture that I can copy and paste right here. So that private conversation that I was having with someone in the private inbox, you can copy it, and then it's not private, and you can publish it, and then that can cause trouble. So. Anything that you're doing that is in a private sort of 
inbox and such isn't really private so you should always think about in terms of what, what if this gets out to, to to people and obviously I'm not saying it like this is gonna be controversial or whatever but what I mean is that if you're trying to do customer service to someone and then you, and then you say you know we're so sorry we're, we're gonna give you a free coupon next time um, that person may may abuse that by making a copy of what you wrote and sending it to other people so just think in terms that things aren't really private in technology notifications the updates of what's happening on your page new comments or replies new followers So anything like that, that's a notification. Something happened on my page. Someone asked a question. All the social networks have that, a form of communication, a form of um, notification of something happening. Insights. The data of your impressions and conversions. You have a screen called Insights, which will give you a lot of great charts and information about uh, this post was, was viewed this number of times, this link was clicked on that number of times, this kind of share was more popular than that one. This demographic, this age group is more active. This time of day is when people most log in. This is what I said on Tuesday that people often ask in my class, well what's the best day to post on Facebook or Instagram? And there's plenty of articles out there <coughs> that will tell you, make sure you post something new every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Well, that's for certain demographics. Your own data and correct answer is going to come from your own insights. Whatever you're posting, Facebook will tell you, this is what worked, this is what didn't, this is what you should do again, or this is what you should change. So tactic. Post. If, if your page is new, even if it's not new, this still works, but tactic. Post several things on a regular basis. Let's say two to three times per week. Post several things on a regular basis for some amount of time. Let's say one month. Check your insights. Determine your future course. I'll show an example with a real client in a moment. But the idea is, I don't know exactly yet what's going to work. So today, I'm going to post a picture of one of my products. A couple of days later, I'm going to post a short video. A few more days later, I'm going to write a longer post with a different picture. I'm going to try different kinds of shares. I'm going to try an inspirational uh, quote. I'm going to try you know, a fast motion instructional video. I'm going to try different things. I'm going to do this for a month or so. So let's say I post eight different things if I do the least one. I'm going to post eight different things in one month. The following month, I go to my insights, and Facebook has collected this data to tell you your text posts didn't work, no one cared. Your video posts were good. Your photo posts with a funny caption were the best. So that might be telling me that my audience, at a certain time and day, cares more about this kind of post. And it'll tell you on this time of day and this day of the week, this is when you got the most results. 
So your answer about the best day and time to post, you're going to get it yourself by generating the data. Determine your future course. Uh, continue what worked. Discontinue or alter what didn't. This is a very common tactic. We do these for the clients. We try different things. We expect this is very interesting and clever and witty. It's going to go viral, and nothing happens. Then something else that's a little bit more loose or, in, or uh, non non-constructed, that one takes off. There's been examples of you know YouTube videos that I've created that I spent a lot of time to really polish up. It doesn't get that many views. In other videos that have a, a couple more issues to them or not a, not as polished, those take off. You never know what's going to go viral. So you're going to try different things for you to figure out what worked for you. Publishing tools. Everything you've published so far. Or posted or shared, which is um, sort of like a library of your content. Those videos that you've up that you uploaded a month ago, you can reuse it two months later. Um, the posts that you made. You, you can bring them back, review them, republish them, and such. So it's like a repository of everything that you've po uh, posted to, to your Facebook page. So at the beginning, most of these are pretty empty. Nothing in the inbox, because I, I haven't con connected with any uh, customers and such. There's a notification here, but in the beginning, Facebook kind of gives you these notifications that really don't don't mean anything just yet. So see, it had a little red number. Something's happening, but no, there's nothing. That's again, that's another annoyance of Facebook. Insights, there's nothing to look at here because this page is brand new. But you see here, you'll see a lot of data. What wh wh what your reach was. It's going to recommend you to do something. Who your new followers are. Publishing. I haven't published anything. There's nothing to look at, but all the videos that I published are here. My drafts and all that stuff is right here. Admin feed. This is a um, slightly different view. It looks very much like a regular, the regular home page, but this admin feed focuses on a little bit of different kinds of data in that it kind of gives you quick feedback about what's been published and some quick stats. It's like a quick stats view. I hardly ever go there, but quick stats. What's that? Sometimes some people don't see some of these things, especially especially if you've got a brand new account after it's been used and set up for a little bit you get more access and what was your comment over here? Is it, we don't see the admin feed is it, is that what's either? yeah some of you might not see it just yet because I've used business pages for a while they give me more features but as you guys set them up and use them you get a few more features you, you might not even have insights do, do, do you guys see insights? okay so you might not see a lot of or some of these simply because the account is very new. They're trying to prevent the spammers so it doesn't give all the features. And, and as I said, I don't really use quick, uh, the admin feed that much, so it's not even like a really big loss. Settings, that's obvious. These are your settings. Settings are your settings. And help is the, um, you know, uh, contact tech support. And because they've got two billion users, they get so many help requests that it can be like shouting in the wind to get results. There's going to be so many of these help yourself articles, which can only take you so far. So 
there's a help there's a help system it has worked I have used it to straighten things out with them but uh, it's very common to kind of be waiting and waiting until you get a response just because there's so many fires to put out that Facebook has, doesn't have enough personnel to answer everything This sort of basic structure stuff, yeah, it takes a while. We haven't posted anything. We haven't tried to get followers. We will continue that. We will, we will do one more thing, then we'll end for the day. We will cover some more Facebook also next time, and then Twitter, then the class is over. But the concepts that we cover for one network will also apply to other networks. There is a whole settings that are similar on Twitter. There's notifications on Twitter. There's notifications on Instagram. There's a lot of these things on a lot of the platforms. They're becoming so similar nowadays, for good and for bad. So um, I want to cover something here, however, that is unique to Facebook. Uh, we haven't covered these other things about photos and video. We will get to that. But I want to cover something here that is very cool and unique to Facebook. If you go back to your page, Right, your home screen of your page below your cover photo you've got a bunch of options here and one of them mine says send message does anyone have it say send message yeah. what does your say uh, button. add button okay interesting so some people will say send message some say we'll add a button this is what is known as the call to action whatever yours might say there's a button that right there that we will call generically the call to action button. Let me just try something here. Okay, yeah, add a button right there. Um, below your cover photo, so we'll say here advanced tip. Add a button. Below your cover photo, you have a call to action button. A call to action is a marketing term about something that entices or better yet convinces your customer to do something. It's a call to action. Do this. Hey my followers, do this. Call to action. So there's a call to action button below your photo. The advanced tip is set up a CTA, call to action, a CTA, set up a CTA button as soon as possible. We'll look at what this button is. But this is going to be a button that Facebook is going to show first um, when someone checks your page. And even better, when someone checks your page on mobile, that's going to be also very visible. It's going to be one of the first things they're going to see. And we should know that we, our customers and, and everyone has, has such short attention spans nowadays. We've got so much to do. So the, thing, the easier we make things for people, the better. And this CTA, this call to action button, is one of the easiest things that we can do and one of the most direct things. Let's check out how this looks. So mine says add a button. Add a button to get people to take an action from your page, such as shop or sign up. Clicking on that pops up all of these things. If I've got a business and I sell my food online, I've got order food. So a button will show up very easily, especially on mobile. They visit my page, order food. Maybe I... Um, I'm selling something, so make a purchase. They will see a, a, a purchase button right away. As an example, under make a purchase, I have either shop now, see offers, I have other options. Other options. That button that you see there, there's a few, there's several sort of like templates that are built in. And there's customizable to some degree but it is limited as well. Um, 
in the make a purchase, I can either make the button say shop now or see offers. I, I can't change it to say buy this. I can't customize it that way. The template is set to some degree. Under shop now, for example, I click that. And all that it will happen is it will say the, bu the button shop now with then a link to my website. This isn't exactly about selling the product quite yet. It's still guiding people back to my website. Just an example, adding that. I guess we've got other buttons. Add a button. So what happens now, when people visit my page, one of the first buttons they will see is a button that says Shop Now. They click that and it goes back to my main website. So I can edit this. I took them to the main website. I could edit this to say directly to, you know, uh, shoppingcart.html. This assumes I have a website. This assumes I have a shopping cart. This assumes I have a whole structure. This is not like that they're going to create a website for you. This is only going to guide people. It's only going to call them to an action, which is to click here to go to the website. So this assumes I've got a website. Clicking that button would then take people over to my website to the shopping cart. And once I've got that notice, I would love it to say something like, buy cookies now. I can't change it. Whatever the name of the button is, with some customization, is what I can do. Let me delete that and then put a different. You can only have one of these buttons at a time. Let's say instead, I want um, get in touch, call now, contact us, send us a message, sign up for something, get a quote. So I have that button that says get a quote. Well. That is going to have some different kind of setup. It's going to have the words, get a quote, but we can't change that to anything else. Get your free, you know, get your free uh, tax prep quote. I can't do that. I'm a tax preparer on my page here. I can't change it that way exactly. And what's going to happen is I can fill this in with a phone number and a and a question that will be asked and which will be sent to my inbox. Let's see, get in touch, call now, that's simply a phone number. So there will be a button that says call now. This works great of course on mobile. They visit my site, there's a button that says call now, they press it, their phone turns on and they call me. I would love it to say something like, call us today but it's going to be called call now. So that's your call to action button at the top. Set a CTA button as soon as possible. Pick from the templates to create actions that your followers can accomplish. Some have options. Some have some have customizations. Some basic. It's still up to you to uh, have your result. Like in the real world, the newspaper will gladly take your money to run your terrible ad, your misspelled ad, your badly designed ad. They'll. They're, they're just a conduit and they will take your money. Here, they will gladly let you set this up all wrong uh, or to a broken link on your site. So it's, they're just giving you the conduit. You still have to confirm that it's all set up properly. So you want to add this button. Why? It's one of the first things your customers will see, especially on mobile.
it. Especially on mobile, it will be easier for them to accomplish. I think at this point we'll end uh, this lecture. We'll, uh, I'll take questions in a moment, but we'll end uh, at this point. We'll, we'll have a little lab time if you want to kind of practice any of this, one-on-one -on -one questions or whatever. When we come back on Tuesday, we will continue to use this Facebook page, uh, specifically talking about posting content, boosting content, trying to get uh, impressions and conversions. But once we've got a basic page set up, it's time to start using it. So, general questions on this last thought or anything we covered today? I'm going to put these notes in the network folder. Um, you have ac you'll, you'll have access to that. And we'll, we'll end the lecture at this point.